Привет! Представляю твоему вниманию полную версию англоязычного интервью Никиты Васильевича на Твичконе в конце 24 -го года. Ну и, конечно же, моя краткая версия с русскоязычным переводом уже на канале. Ну а все, что ты думаешь по поводу, буду рад прочитать в комментариях. Ну и, конечно же, за лайки и репосты отдельный респект. I'm sitting down on the sofa with Nikita or Nick, because we're, uh, we're friends like that. And uh, he, he said I could call him Nick. Guys, if you don't know who this man is, the founder of Battlestate Games, of Escape from Tarkov and Escape from Tarkov Arena and DJ Extraordinaire, probably a bunch of other stuff as well, but we've only got like half an hour. So, Nick, thanks for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, Welcome, and uh, as always, uh, love to be here on a Twitch con. Uh, yeah, let's go, let's go. Let's go. And Nick joined us in Rotterdam as well. We were playing Arena at TwitchCon EU. He came up, we asked him a ton of questions. He gave us the answers to some of them. He refused to give us the answers to the others. And I know that you wanted to start off with some statements today, right? To talk yeah. about the state of the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the quick, quick, quick uh, update what's going on right now. So, the thing that I want to mention that we just released the, um, like, milestones and stuff for the future. It has a lot of things that will be in the game, so you should, like, check it and see by yourself. But also... There is a the thing that we prepare pretty cool stuff for you this year and we won't disclose it yet because we want to make a surprise for you guys. And uh, yeah, so things are going, bugs are getting fixed, so don't worry, all the issues that we have right now, it's getting addressed uh, as we speak because even we are here, it's a really limited amount of people right here. The team is working 24-7 to fix all of this stuff, to fix all of this, you know, annoying things within the game. So don't worry, everything will be all right. It's almost a 10 years of escape from Tarkov. It's a huge, it's a huge number actually. And uh, it's pretty unique for the gaming industry to have the game which being worked on for the whole 10 years. And uh, it's a miracle. Not only it's be, it, it was done not only by ourselves, but with you guys, of course, the players, and all of these engaged people who are into this escape from Tarkov miracle. So thank you guys, and uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to say for the status. Yeah. Ten years of development on this game, guys. Come on. The, and the amount of work that goes into this game is just, I mean, it, it bleeds out of every pore of Tarkov. Like, just the detail of everything is so phenomenally in-depth. And the community feedback, I know, is incredibly important to the Battlestate Games team. And we have questions here, a mixture of just things that we wanted to ask and community questions as well. And I think it's time to get into them because we have a lot and I don't know if we're going to be able to get through them all. So I'm going to read these out exactly as written because I want to make sure that if someone asks a question, it's asked properly. So Nick, first question, are you happy with the current state of the game's economy and the player's progression? Will we ever see a more hardcore enemy? So, yeah, this vibe particularly, uh, it's not what's supposed to be in terms of progression. Because we added Arena, we added this new marathon quest, and it actually gave you a lot of experience. So the, the pace was increased for sure. And it's not how it's meant to be in Escape from Tarkov style. So most likely for the next vibe, there will be some you know, changes that will slow down the progress for sure. Because right now, let's take it as it is, as a test maybe. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Because it's not like a problem, because of course, we get it that it was too fast actually. But some of you like still think that it's okay, because like, not everyone is a streamer basically and have an option to play the game every single day for six hours, eight hours, etc. So, yeah, 
every single vibe there is something new is going on in terms of balance economy and stuff so let, let it be this way so this vibe is different the next vibe will be totally different too and uh, everything will be balanced in different way we'll see how it will go okay okay so what is the future direction of the game so MMO, maybe mul massively multiplayer online, or something closer to a raid-based shooter? Uh, so right now, uh, I think the most uh, part of, like the, the big, bigger part of the team is working on an actual completion of the game. So you all know that the, the game will have storyline quests, and it will have an option to finally escape from Tarkov. So that's why we're pushing on it. And right now it's more about to add the end game content within the game. And uh, yeah, it will be around the whole principle of raid, raids. And uh, yeah, it will, it will be around like this. Because the MMO aspect of the game, it still will be in there. But I think uh, the gameplay wise, and we, we kind of settled in. And I think the core gameplay is ready. And we won't change something drastically. So yeah, this is it. Next question is about the flea market. It says, there was a poll made to remove the flea market next wipe. And 47% said yes, 45% said no. Will we ever expect to see a wipe without a flea market, even just as a test? And what are the general plans for the flea market? So the percentage is not all right because it will leave a lot of people unhappy basically if we select like this or that. So most likely the removal of the flea market will be as an option for the hardcore mode. So we plan to have this whole prestige system within the game and you will be able to pick the perks and the drawbacks before you start the game and one of the drawbacks will be like removal of the flea market. So at least it will be as a test for some of you guys if you will select that option. But other than that, I'm not sure that we will remove it totally for the vibe. But again, it's, it's possible actually because I love the idea that the every single vibe has something new, has something different in it. So who knows, maybe we'll remove that at least for one wipe and see how it will go. Because I personally don't like the flea market. I was loving it. I was loving it for the many, many years. And right now, I'm feeling that it's not good for the progression and for the, for the whole principle of, of the game itself. But it is what it is. It's a different style of gameplay. It's a diff you, you, you can have basically the different role within the game. You can be the trader, basically, and uh, you won't need to play the game as much as other people do. So it is a uh, workable, livable thing within the game. But yet, due to the complexity of the game, all of the stuff we have in the game, flea market adds unneeded, uh, let's say combination unneeded things that actually boost up or slow down progress it's kind of it's kind of hard to track the progress and how to be on the pace with the progress within the game with the flea market because it allows you basically to make your uh, progress much more faster by obtaining items like high-end uh, items in early stages of the game so it's not cool We'll, we will think about it in the future, so yeah, maybe something will be happen about it, but at least it will be an option for the hardcore mode for the game. I honestly, one of my favorite things about speaking to Nick is that you can tell there's not really like a PR filter like you get when you talk, do most interviews. Like it, it, someone will ask like, what do you think about this feature of the game? And he's like, I don't like it. Honestly, <laughs> like it's and that, that kind of honesty is exactly why we've got this huge crowd of people, people standing behind the crowd as well, watching this. So thank you for coming to talk to us. And you've been working on this, like you said, for a decade now, 10 years. So what are the plans for the team 
for after Tarkov. Will you, will you resume development on Russia 2028, or are you working on something different? Uh, so first of all, uh, the Tarkov will not end with the release of the game. So it will be DLCs and stuff. And most importantly, there will be new game. And uh, we already kind of started the pre-production phase on that. And uh, you will see. But again, uh, the EFT must be released, must be polished. And uh, actually, all of the stuff we planned for the release is kind of locked in. We actually don't add anything right now. So it's kind of locked and ready to be done and eventually to be released. Uh, and that's important. After that, we will have the DLCs and everything. So the game will be live for at least one more decade or something. Because it's already became an, a classic, I guess. And uh, that's cool. That's cool because it's, it's always a good thing for us, for developers, to see every single year. For the whole 10 years, we kind of pushing our limits to something even bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, as I said before, it's a true miracle and not only about our hard work, it's also about you guys, about your re reactions, your feedback, and your dedication to the project. I received so many responses for this only single day. So yeah, we love you guys and thank you for staying with us. Like, it's a good thing for us to keep going. Thank you. <laughs> and I think, honestly, saying that this game is a classic is kind of underselling it. Like, you literally spawned a genre and of games now that are just sort of like, hey, have you played this new Tarkov knockoff game? <laughs> like, it is pretty incredible to basically now have your own category of games based on what you guys have done it and was continue to do. It was totally unexpected that there will be a realization that we actually created a genre. It was unexpected, unexpected to say the least. So yeah, yet again, we just want to create a unique experience. And maybe it sounds dull, it sounds OK, but we really are trying to do the best. And uh, it's still 10 years. And we still have something for you guys to surprise. And 100% you will love it. And uh, yeah, you will experience that. And uh, yeah, that's the most important thing. To see your reactions, to see your feelings, to see you're basically surprised. And it's super cool for us to, to see that and to feel that too. I want to roll the next two questions into one because they're both related to what you said before about how development doesn't end when the game gets finally released as a, as a polished game with endgame content. Will there be more endgame content? For example, having something to spend millions of rubles on for a unique item that persists through wipes, more rewards for achievements such as unique, unique hideout decorations, trophies, or any other long-term goals we can progress towards? And would there be any new monetization plans like camo skins, clothes, hideout, cosmetics, things like that? Uh, as I mentioned before, there will be a prestige system that will allow you to play the game constantly, repeatedly, and to earn some unique stuff. As, so you basically will complete the game, complete the main quest, and you will be able to restart it, but you will receive the prestige points or something. So it will be different prestige levels and some unique stuff, the first thing. Uh, and again, as I mentioned it before, all of the end game content will be settled in the storyline quests. To complete the storyline quest, you will need to complete almost every aspect of the game. You will need to spend a lot of money within the game, complete a lot of quests. So basically, the main driver uh, to experience the end game content will be the completion of the storyline quests. And of course, I cannot say more about it because as I mentioned it many times, 
the quests, storyline quests will be available only in release version of the game. You won't be able to test them before because it's the final, how to say it, final shot, let's say it like this, to surprise you in a good way and to have this feeling that the game is actually completed and all of your effort you put in, in the game will be around some very important tasks called storyline quests. So yeah, eventually soon enough you will experience that because we spent a lot of time on that right now. We started doing them in the last year, so it's ongoing process. A lot of effort is being put on to the storyline quests and hopefully you will enjoy it soon enough. Soon enough. That's not soon enough. <laughs> Everyone is just so excited for the end game content for this game to be released in full. Uh, are there any plans to rework the operational tasks? Currently, they are too randomized and sometimes have out of the way objectives for little reward. For example, killing other scavs as a scav for an operational quest for fence for only 0.1 rep and a few bandages. And I, I'm gonna remind you, these are questions from the community. Uh, and I'm trying to read them as they're presented. They're quite blunt questions, a lot of them. For the operational tasks, uh, I think there will be another balancing pass on them because uh, there is a lot of different, like, generated subtasks for that. And it's not always perfect in terms of awards and everything. So most likely it will be balanced. Uh, pretty quick, maybe for the next patch or the patch after the next patch. So, uh, yeah, yeah, something will be done in, in terms of that. In your opinion, what is the ideal loot economy meant to be? Do you want resources to be scarce and more hardcore, or do you want players to hunt expensive items to fund lesser valued items through the flea market and traders? It's a good question, actually, because I, I was always a fan of hardcore type of game. So the initial concept of the game was about the actual struggling. So the ammo and everything, the treatment items, the initial concept about them was like they were too scarce, like too rare to find. And uh, that was kind of the main thing. So you actually need to find like five rounds, 10 rounds, like one single grenade in one week. So I was always a fan of that. So it's like hardcore uh, type of thing. But due to expansion of the game, let's call it like this, uh, a lot of people got excited about the game and we got a lot of people from the mainstream even so it was too hard for them to actually understand and play the game. So we decided to track it and make the game like not super hardcore, like mid-core or something. So yeah, it, it needs to be done because I'm a fan of the game being hard on you. I'm a fan of the true hardcore experience and uh, I was always repeating myself that the game is not for fun. EFT is not a fun game. It's not for your pleasure. It's, <laughs> it's just a pain in the ass basically. And it's okay. It's okay because you will receive that emotions when you finally complete, when you finally win the raid. So you will receive that emotions and that's one of the main things about the game but if you got it too hard you will receive a lot of responses a lot of things that will draw attention of the game so that's why we need to balance these things and uh, make it somewhere in between truly hardcore experience and the mid-core experience something like that that's so, I've literally, I can't imagine a single other game developer being like, our game is not supposed to be fun. That's true, that's true. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I love your honesty. And honestly, it's just so refreshing to talk to you up here, Nick. Hey, with the, 
And by the way, Escape from Tarkov Arena that we're playing on stage all weekend is free this weekend. It is free to play until Monday. So if you haven't played it, you go and play it in the LAN. If you're watching at home, play this game while you can for free this weekend. And this next question is about that. With the free weekend going on for Arena, do you believe that Arena could become a free-to-play game at some point in the future? Uh, I'm not sure, because uh, Arena is a big part of the EFT. So it's not like you can play it separately, of course, but the game, the Arena, is the big part of the EFT lore and everything. So I'm not sure that it eventually will be free to play, but at least uh, free weekends is a kind of good thing for Arena. So most likely we will continue this practice in the future. How do you handle the balance in terms of developing quality of life features and releasing the content patch pretty much every month? I, I was just talking about the EFT is not a fun game. The development of EFT is not a fun development. Because <laughs> you guys, uh, we can feel your pain. And we actually have a lot of pain within the development too. So it's everything surrounded by suffering. And it's kind of okay, I guess, because it actually allows us to understand that the things are we, like what we're doing is important because it actually has some kind of meaning because everything is getting achieved with the pain and uh, that's that's a good thing how we balance quality of life features and the content it actually doesn't link anyhow because we have different separate team for the content different team for the quality of life features we have a huge list of the quality of life features and it's always uh, like it's always a, a thing that we cannot take them we cannot take all of them for the patches and we try to select the most important ones and this is a thing that we call that we can call a balance because we just select things which are most important for the people or have the most influence on the gameplay in terms of quality of life features. And that's it. The content is a separate thing. And they just go in and go in and go in. They doesn't link anyhow to the quality of life feature production. Something that I think a lot of people here might be interested in. There have been discussions about Tarkon for Tarkov players like an actual convention for Tarkov players. Now, I would love to hear if there are any more plans for that. And also, are there any plans to host uh, EFT Arena lands at some point in next year or so? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we have plans for that, for Tarkov. Uh, I know that it's kind of frozen right now because we have a lot of events going right now, like WitchCon like, and, and so on. But uh, the game will be here for the long time, at least for 10 years. And uh, of course, I think all this engagement, so we have like uh, approximate overall engagement of the whole community around the world like the people who are actually interest in the game it's something around 50 million people 50 not 15 50 million people and it's the number is so huge of course this is the potential buyers of the game so the people who actually interest in the game and i believe that we need to do something in terms of like community stuff to make some kind of event, some kind of conference. So this task is still on the tracks somewhere and eventually it will be 100%. And what was the second question? The second question was whether or not there are any plans to host Arena Lands oh. at some point in the next year. Uh, 
Yes, because I believe it's already being done something in that direction. Even now for the TwitchCon, we automated a lot of stuff for the specific purpose of the tournaments. And I believe in the future it also will be possible. Again, with your engagement and with it, you know, like if I will see the need of additional uh, action related for the events like tournaments and stuff, we will definitely do it. So we can kind of refer to your opinion and to your reaction. If we, if we see that you guys are wanting it, so we are on it and we will do it. That's it. What do you think, guys? Do you want to see some lands for this game? Yeah. I think there's a lot of support okay. for that. So he has to do it now. You wanted it. He said. So. <laughs> hey, uh, we see a lot of esports tournaments already as well being hosted by Battlestate Games. We've seen a lot this year. And there are other tournament organizers now trying to get involved as well. Have you ever considered introducing betting so players could have an extra incentive to watch the tournament? Uh, what do you mean exactly? I think this question means like gambling on the, the outcome of the events and things like that. Uh, actually, I don't know because we, we were never about this particular case. We actually always about the experience, the emotions, and so on. Uh, so I think this particular thing is more on the organizers, I guess, on the promo companies and so on. So I wonder if, uh, you know, outside of just straight up gambling, whether there's like any possibility to have an in-game option to like maybe bet on like esports events that go it's some sort of integration that's actually like in the game itself uh again it could be done within the in-game currency or something it could be done 100 percent. but if it will be based on a real currency it could be a violation in many many countries around the world so that's why we are not f like thinking about it right now so yeah with the release of PVE, which is actually almost like a standalone project, how did the process change in the development team? Did you divert some specialists from the team, like just to focus on the PVE? Uh, actually, it's a pretty small part of the team who is working on a PVE functionality. And uh, there was a moment that we did uh, fully standalone offline rates. There was a moment we actually redesigned stuff in there, but uh, it's not like a big amount of people working on that. But still, we have a pretty big plans for the PVE with the additions of different features and stuff. It so the general like development process didn't change basically, but with all of this interest of the PVE, people loved PVE. It was unexpected, actually. And uh, yeah, we decided to add more resources to continue developing the whole PVE uh, subsystems. So yeah, PVE was a surprise, for sure, for me, <laughs> for sure. Uh, with the popularity of PVE, and it took you by surprise, and talks of mod support as well, are there any plans to make it compatible with pre-existing third-party mods with the inclusion of modding frameworks for Unity, uh, such as Bepinex? The whole idea behind the mods, I uh, like the idea that uh, players, uh, creators will have an option to actually create mods for the game, for the PvE. And I was uh, saying uh, some time ago that eventually there will be a system which will consist of like moderations and uh, I don't know tools and everything that will actually provide creators uh, an ability to basically add mods and stuff for the PVE. So I like that idea. And all of the existing stuff, uh, we will have a process like a pipeline 
uh, for adding those modifications officially within the game. So why 100% about it? So it's totally a good thing for the game. And uh, yeah, like let's wait for it. I think it will be available sometime after release. So yeah. Fantastic. You actually answered my next question with that question as well. So that was fantastic. Are there any plans to have more armor to include throat protection or even a standalone set for the neck itself? As this is quite a hot topic to the community right now. And I know a lot of players will be happy to hear any insight on this. Yeah. Uh, I know that uh, the neck hitbox is kind of bothering you right now. And hopefully something will be done because uh, there is some uh, different things that we can do about it. Some kind of interpolation, some kind of simplification of the hitboxes. Uh, we will do something because it's always like this. If you have some, you know, ongoing, uh, let's say like ongoing rant about some kind of feature of the game, it's not like we don't care. We always try to take it into the consideration and make some changes. So most likely something will be done about it. Are there any plans to utilize ETS more than it is now? We haven't heard any update about what's being tested on it other than Unity 2022. It's a pretty big test. It's important. Uh, so right now on ETS, we have Unity 2022. And we have a response is that it's still the same. And it's good because it was the case, actually. We just needed you guys to test uh, the build on Unity 2022 to have the feedback that something that everything is okay so we will switch onto this new version for the main branch and eventually we will start adding the features that actually suitable for Unity 2022 and add those fancy stuff that uh, we promised and uh, about the question that is uh, there will be some new stuff to test on ETS. Eventually, yes, I don't have an, an exact plans for the testing for the ETS, but eventually something will be uh, for the ETS for sure. And um, with that transition to Unity 2022, will players see a difference with how the game works between now and once it's transitioned? It won't be so noticeable at first. Because, yet again, this is just the change. It's not like the total change of the game engine. It's just a new version of it. But uh, yeah, new Unity will allow us to implement some technical stuff that will give performance, that will give networking performance, and so on. And it, and it will be noticeable. But it won't be like this, that the game will totally change in terms of visuals, in terms of networking, in one single day. So, yeah. Your, don't have those like high expectations on that. Uh, of course, there will be changes, but it will be gradually implemented. So from the roadmap that we've seen, there are a lot of technical and quality of life improvements. Could you give us a teaser of what's the biggest priority for the team right now? Is it, for example, smoother and more stable FPS across locations? bug fixes, or features to make the gameplay loop more enjoyable? Everything. Everything is, it's always uh, uh, like ongoing process for us to balance between optimizing features, quality of life features. But the good thing is, as I mentioned before, we have separate teams and they're working on the whole things all together. So I can say it like this, all of the roadmap stuff, it's important, it's important for sure. But the most important thing right now that we're doing is the end game content, storyline quest, preparation for release, and the events that we plan to release this and the next year for you, they are huge, they will be remarkable. And this is what we're actually working on, the most of the team working on right now. 
So roadmap doesn't actually represent all of the work with, with, which is going on right now. So yeah, something like that. Just everything, everything. Everything is important. That's what can I say? <laughs> Last question from the community here. You made audio this wipe more realistic and closer to how everything sounds in real life. Can you share a little bit of what has been done behind the scenes to give this level of, of kind of realism? Uh, so yeah, we reworked the headsets and everything. And it was actually a process that we bought a lot of headsets in real life. And we just record them live in the field. So we actually added to the process the engineer team, the sound team. So they basically worked together live in the field. They like tested everything and tried to represent the real life prototypes. So uh, yeah, so it's that simple. We just added engineers uh, for the actual live testing of the real life uh, devices. And that's it. Guys, make some noise. What an incredible crowd, an incredible community. Nick, thank you. Thanks thank for you guys. Up. Thank you guys. We will be here for today and tomorrow. Uh, we actually have uh, like a lot of merch, but it, it got frozen by the customs for some reason. I don't know. I don't know the exact situation about it. So maybe tomorrow we will have something for you guys. Uh, sorry for that. But uh, yet again, thank you for coming. We will be here tomorrow. Thank you for playing the game. Love you all, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.